Okay, once again, folks, welcome back. Um, we are back uh, live streaming. Um, in the wake of this huge day in the markets, um, we recently had, uh, we just had Dave Modell on. Um, uh, we have, conf uh, we have uh, not confirmed, but we're pretty sure that XIV did not close um, its doors today. It did not reach uh, down 80%. It only reached down 65%. Um, if it had shut down, we would have seen uh, a spike in the futures as they liquidated. Um, you have to remember also with S uh, SVXY, which was another one that we, the people were speculating about, uh, you have to... Uh, Remember with SVXY that um, that um, it's offset partially by UVXY. So the, the the exposure they have, the only thing they need to hedge for is the difference in exposure between the two. Now one's uh, double, one, one's double, and one's single leverage. So that makes a little bit of a of a difference also. But once they do the calculation, they offset each other largely. Um, just looking at the term structure here for a second, uh, let's go over that quickly. Um, let me make myself a little bit smaller here and we'll look at the term structure. Uh, okay, so um, I'm just posting that I'm live streaming here. Uh, Uh, term structure obviously all over the place today. Um, the VIX is obvi we're obviously uh, way below. Uh, spot is way above the futures. Obviously, uh, just putting our little link in here, folks. Just give me one second. Okay. So. Um, Uh, I came on with uh, and was just talking with David Modell. Uh, so far, we, we uh, have found that the uh, XIV and SVXY have not shut down. Uh, there was some talk by Jim Cramer initially that that they were going to shut them down and that uh, they should be investigated. That something fishy was going on. Uh, so far, I can't find those tweets again. Um, there was a circuit breaker triggered for um, SBXY at 3.09. It halted for a, a, a couple minutes, uh, 3.09 New York time. So after the close, right after the close, SBXY did halt on circuit breakers. Uh, that was because it was ripping down. Now, the information we're receiving right now is that SBXY ripped down on redemptions, uh, uh, margin redemptions after the close, not because there was an acceleration event. So uh, what that means is that people who were who were long SVXY on margin in their accounts. Uh, unfortunately, I saw a screenshot from a couple different people who uh, had bought SVXY on margin. Here is the uh, here is the action after hours. Um, unfortunately, I saw. Uh, yeah, screenshots from a couple people that have bought SVXY on margin and uh, and had lost all and had actually gone negative. So that is uh, sad to hear. You never want to hear anybody go negative. But uh, after the close, we did see um, both of these rip down, this one and XIV. Let's pull up XIV for a second here. Uh, XIV closed $99 and it, it traded down to $10. Uh, this due to uh, redemptions. Now, uh, I believe somewhere in the literature it says that uh, for an 80% move, there will be an acceleration event. Uh, the information I'm getting is that there was only a 65% down move. Uh, let's pull up some info here from a couple tweets. Uh, there was one guy on here who had some great, great stuff. So. So this guy here, uh, Arvind Armalia, I know it's just 
if anybody can say anything in a tweet, but uh, VIX futures, this is an hour ago, VIX futures just reopened. They're 29.5. I guess that means that XIV after hours move is margin liquidation. Uh, I don't think it makes sense that CS should just shut the fund down. Uh, and then uh, we're getting a lot of responses to Jim Cramer, who is talking sort of about how these funds are a scam and should be investigated. Uh, there's a question here about what happens for liquidation for options. What will the value of XIV and SVXY on liquidation? Uh, the way I can answer that question, I believe the way it works is that, well, first of all, the reason that people liquidate, uh, let's just pull up this because it's more interesting to look at here. The reason that people liquidate, uh, the reason that, that they would liquidate something if it was down 80% is because uh, firms use futures to uh, and uh, future like products to uh, for the, for these funds. So uh, if they uh, have a futures position on, if they don't close their doors with it down 80%, they do risk that their position can go negative and uh, they can go in the hole. Now, no company wants to go in the hole. So uh, so what they do is if it goes down 80%, they get they give themselves a 20% room cushion and they liquidate. So they sell out the futures. So what would happen to your options is once they sell out the futures, they have a, a whatever cash is left over, they divide that among the shares outstanding. And so they would issue a final share price of something, some number, and that would be the price that the options went out on, as far as I understand it. So uh Key numbers show, this is from Vance Hartwood, uh, key numbers show uh, VXX uh, uh, implied volatility value plus 96% for the day, uh, and SVXY uh, uh, implied volatility down 96.67%. I believe he just means that the, uh, the fund is down 96%. Uh, so uh, anyways, uh, yeah, somebody was saying how CNBC should be talking more about this, and uh, they probably are at this point, but uh, uh, we're going to talk about it here. Uh, so anyways, um, and then this guy, Bill Luby, who's a, a real famous guy on, online, uh, saying, whichever brokers are liquidating accounts due to after-hours moves and vol ETPs have no doubt unnecessarily bankrupt some of their customers. So what they're saying, what he's saying there is uh, some brokerages are going to look at this move and say, oh, this is trading, uh, like right now, for example, XIV is trading $16. Oh, this is trading $16. If somebody's margined out on that, they're going to sell it at $16. And, uh, you know, the reality of the situation is, is this is going to come back. Uh, it is going to come back. The futures will settle down at some point. Uh, you know, VIX up 37 today. Let's look at the futures. Um, I've got the futures up on the screen. Let me actually kind of try to enlarge this so you can see it a little bit better here. Let's see. Okay, is that better? Um, VIX futures are over here. So we've got uh, the front month future right now trading 2630. Uh, it reached 3335 right on the close. Now, if we had had an acceleration event, we would have seen this rip higher uh, after the close, I believe. Um, so as we see the future settling back down, that means that they did not liquidate as far as I understand it. Um, so we see this future uh, way off the highs. Um, we saw that rip right on the close, but off the highs now, uh, down six, almost $7 from where it closed. Sounds amazing, huh? The future down $7 from where it closed. Uh, next month out, uh, I'm sorry, that's not the next month out. That's two months out. Next month out, uh, this is going to be the uh, March futures, twenty-one dollars down, three seventy-two from the close. Uh, as we as we move down this list, let's look at the v, uh, VVIX. VVIX went, got over two hundred dollars today. Unbelievable. VVIX over two hundred. Um, this is amazing. I, I haven't followed this forever, but let's look at a three-year chart. Okay, so three-year chart, uh, this is uh, highest it's ever, well, let's see. Actually, no. When would that be? Two th August 2015, that move, the VIX did actually get higher. Let's look at the VIX comparison here. And uh, the VIX got higher too. So look at these two moves here. Uh, 
Let me move this back into line because you can't see it that well. Uh, let's see, transform, reset. All right, so you can see that a little bit better there. Uh, look at this is uh, just the VIX, and uh, you can see what do you notice about all these moves? Well, what I notice about the most of them is that day after, broke right back down. So uh, I don't think we're going to be standing at 37 vol in the VIX for very long. Uh, I know that I saw at least two people who uh, basically lost everything, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry to report that. Um, you never want to see people blow out. Um, I was working for a, uh, a broker. Or I'm sorry. I was working as a trader at the uh, Chicago Board of Trade. And uh, I was working for a market maker. We were in the 10-year pit. The guy was short premium. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, he was short premium, as we say in the trading world. He'd sold a bunch of straddles. We were trading 10-year bond options. And... Uh, <clears throat> Things went against him. Uh, he, I think he like it went way down. He sold a bunch of bonds. It went way up. He bought them back for a big loss. And long story short, we um, we got to the turnstiles at the exchange, and our key cards would not work the next day. That's how I knew that we had blown out, and uh, I no longer had a job. Now that was as a clerk. As a trader, I never did blow out. I did uh, consistently not make money to the point where. Uh, I shut down once that was uh, on my own in 30 year bonds and that was not a fun situation I can tell you it's not it's no fun whatsoever um, today was not good for me um, currently we see uh, the Dow futures up 160 uh, 178 after the close Nasdaq futures up uh, 27 uh, ES futures up 18 after the close uh, not a fun day for me uh, really took some huge heat uh, I am very grateful though because uh, if we look at UVXY early in the day, uh, I did panic and cover my position. Uh, it, it was a long, long weekend for me because uh, I knew I had risk. I was fearing the worst coming in Monday, and this thing just would be ripped up against me. Uh, I um, Just making sure it doesn't show my numbers here. I don't want people to see my exact numbers. But anyways... Um, was worried coming in this morning, and uh, but we did not gap up immediately. As I said about Friday, it was an organized market at least to start with, and uh, there was time to do stuff if you wanted to. And um, so here is the chart of UVXY for the day. Let's widen this out just a little bit here. Uh, here's a five-day chart. Okay, so uh, around the 16 level here during the morning, I did. Uh, cover my short calls. I was short some 21, 22 calls, and I'm happy that I covered them there because this thing basically doubled after that. So uh, biggest move probably uh, that I've seen uh, since I started trading UBXY. Uh, we're live streaming now. Uh, I'm going to look on stock tweets. If anybody has questions, let's look at the chat for a second. I haven't looked at the chat. Um, let's pull up the chat on YouTube. Uh, if you have questions, I'm happy to answer them. I know this is a scary situation. Okay. Hi, guys in chat. Okay, so let's take... Um, so, okay. So, Abracadabra, you, you made money. Is that it? Do, 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 do. Uh, I went long UVXY and D's, turned 3K into 8K. That's nice. All right, cool. Uh, so uh, CR11138, true, this is not a uh, termination event. And true, the damage is done. A lot of people, uh, uh, hey, Dave, curious to know if HIV, which is S&P 500 VIX short-term futures, share the same fate of XIV is terminated. Uh, I, I did see some uh, discussion of um, of that particular of HVI, um, and uh, uh, it would have a similar uh, event. Is HVI uh, an inverse, or uh, uh, is it like XVI, uh, XIV? If it's like XIV, then yeah. If it does get down low, it will. They will terminate it. The reason they do it is because. Uh, 
when they're they're simulate they're uh, making this fun work with futures. So uh, nav. All right. Um, they um they do simulate they do run the fun with futures. So the reason they would terminate it was because they don't want to go negative. So if it does go down eighty percent, they would shut it down. Um, but the information I have so far is that none of these uh, are uh, are in that situation. Uh, a smart guy here uh, explained that we got to 65%. Let's see if I can pull up a tweet here. We got down 65%, so that wasn't enough. Uh, you know, buying opportunity, I know <laughs> people don't want to hear that, but buying opportunity in XIV right now. Um, so. Jim Cramer, uh, as I am understanding this, XIV may have busted, which could cause the X VIX to spike to 50, which could cause a giant mechanical decline tomorrow morning like we have today. Be ready. Um, okay, so we're not seeing that in the futures now. Uh, if, uh, if we had, uh, if we had uh, shut the doors on these, we would have seen the futures rally. We have not seen the futures rally. Um, so what he's talking about is not happening. So as we look now, um, XIV trading $16 off the lows, got down to a low of 10. Uh, SVXY, take a look at that, trading $15. So you would have made 50% if you bought the low right, right then. Um, I think that this is a good buy. Uh, VMAN uh, down to uh, $750. Um, Vman, uh, I believe, does have some shares of some of these other things. So, uh, uh, but appears to be uh, trading not at, at, uh, not closed right now. Um, it was a rough day, folks. Um, I, I do know of two people so far that uh, did uh, go negative. That's uh, you never want to see that happening with people. Um, I'm gonna go try to go back to the chat for a second here. Um, I personally had a really rough day, but I'm grateful that I switched my short calls into long put spreads. Um, so XIV, uh, I believe XIV will survive. I believe it is going to survive. I believe that the selling was due to uh, redemptions. People who are on margin who uh, whose accounts went negative. We saw some examples of that on stock tweets earlier today where people giving screenshots of uh, their um, accounts negative. Uh, don't look at zero hedge. They're like retweeting old articles from a really long time ago. Um, people are tweeting on stock tweets. Don't trade. Uh, don't trade um, XIV after hours. This is not tracking the VIX, so that's interesting. Uh, I don't make advice on trading one way or the other. I'm not authorized to make advice. I'm just giving you the news here, folks. Uh, retweeted by Howard Lindzen, Lindzen to probably not trade XIV uh, because it's not following the VIX. Uh, I don't know why it would be following the VIX, though. It would be following VIX futures, so I don't know what that silliness is all about. Um, so let's go to the chat um, once again. Uh, we did see SVXY actually uh, halt trading after the close at 307. It halted trading for a few minutes because of that huge down move. Um, but um, we, we have not seen, uh, these things are not closed though, they're, they're still trading. Uh, what to look for tomorrow, uh, let's look at the VIX graph. Um, as we pull up the VIX graph right here, uh, we can see that huge move, uh, if we look at three years out, what do we see after all these spikes? Uh, we, see that, we see it going back down. Uh, now, obviously, this is a derivative, of course, folks, of the SPY, of the SPX. 
So we want to look at the SPX. If the SPX rebounds, this thing is toast, 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 toast. If the SPX goes sideways, I don't know what's going to happen. If the SPX goes down, this thing will uh, trend sideways to higher. So it's all about that right now. Um, these are huge moves, folks, in the futures. I mean, the front month future down 6.8 points since the close. That's a huge, huge move. Uh, now, people like Jim Cramer are saying, oh, well, you know, this needs to be investigated. No, this is the this is the uh, lubrication of our uh, of our markets in progress. This is the uh, liquidity. This is capitalism in motion. People taking risk. Uh, people the risk getting spread through volatility products out across a wide range of people that are willing to take those risks. That's what. Um, we are providing liquidity. This is what a capitalistic market is all about. Um, he doesn't, uh, maybe Jim Cramer doesn't like it because he doesn't understand it, but um, people re have to redeem. If you're going to buy stuff on margin, you know, we, we preach all the time. You don't want to, it's already a leveraged product. Why lever it even more by buying it on margin? That's, that's just silliness. Um, yet today, uh, so UBXY right now trading 26. It did get, excuse me, it did get all the way up to $34. Um, uh, I dodged a bullet. Um, I would have, I would have probably gone negative because I was, um, I was short some calls. I wasn't short that many calls. I was short about 30 of the calls. I was short March 21, 22 calls. And um, today with the stock uh, trading $16, I covered my calls right around here in the chart and um, then I proceeded below 18 <laughs> to buy put spreads which went against me but um, I know what I can lose what I paid for them and uh, it's not inconceivable that in the next month this does go back below this level here uh, I just kind of have to wait it out at this point but we do see after hours uh, the sell-off in UVXY actually reversing itself a little bit here and now we're back up a little bit. We got down to about 23. Now moving back up. Also, front month VIX futures moving slightly back up here. We're seeing them sort of catch a little uh, little move back up here. Uh, that due, of course, to the uh, ES futures selling off again. So this is what this is what the last uh, day looks like here. And you can see um, the big sell off in the uh, the ES, the E minis, and then uh, after hours here. Now, if this doesn't hold and it goes back down, we will see volatility uh, firm up again. It's all about that. Uh, we need to get far, you know, off the low before um, volatility is really going to get crushed. Um, I'm not the right person to ask about charts about where this is going to go to or what's going to happen. That's not my level of expertise. Um, but the VIX uh, right now um, is, I believe, closed. So the person that is, uh, I believe it's closed right now. Maybe I'm wrong on that. Let me see if I can pull up time and sales here. Uh, I believe the VIX is closed right now, uh, the, uh, the updating of the VIX. So... Uh, we had definite tracking problems today. I don't know if you folks noticed that in the VIX. We had, uh, when things were at, at its worst, we had uh, several prints. It, it was like 3573, something like that. We had several prints in a row of the same thing. Um, and uh, it was scary. Um, SVXY right now trading sixteen dollars. Um, Vmin seven dollars and twenty five cents. Uh, now seven fifty. So um, Vmin a teeny bit off the lows. Very hard to value what Vmin is right now because we we have no idea what holdings they have. Um, but all of these things, I think, are a scoop right here. Um, I think that, well I, they're all cheaper than they were uh, previously. Uh, but we have no way. We really have a hard time valuing a lot of these a lot of these instruments right now because 
We never know exactly what Beeman is holding, but we know even less right now. Um, so we're still uh, above water here. NASDAQ still up 10, 975, 10. Uh, Dow futures up 94 and ES futures up 10, but they have given back a little bit. Um, they were up like 30 or something right after the close. So uh, scary day for everybody here, um, but hang in there. Um, this is the biggest volatility day we've had in a really long time. Uh, let's go back to Twitter for a second. Once again, uh, reports... Uh, there are no, there is no confirmed report that XIV or SVXY has uh, closed uh, they did close with a NAV of 4.22 um, Eli Mintz asking a good question could there be a partial liquidation what would be the consequences for options be in that case uh that's a very tricky and who knows i don't know <laughs> i don't know the answer to that partial liquidation it sounds like a two-tier takeover there would be probably be a stub a stub of options you probably get partial cash and then you there'd be options still trading on what was left they'd have to uh, create a, a separate options stub of what was left i would say uh the question here was uh eli mintz could there be a partial liquidation of XIV, what would be the consequences for options be what would consequence for options be in that case? Uh, so uh, I don't really know the answer to that. I think it would be like a sort of a takeover deal where there was a cash component and a stub where they would have separate options. Uh, you would value whatever it was. Uh, you would mark whatever partial liquidation you did at whatever price that was, and the options would all expire at that price. They would go to uh, parity on the moment that you expired it and then the ones that were still listed would be relisted as a stub uh once again jim kramer was talking before had a tweet about how um, something is really wrong after the close with xiv we believe now what has happened is that there was uh, a lot of redemptions of uh people who had been long on margin were forced to redeem uh shares and um and that's why both those things were down. Uh, let's go back one more second to our screens. Um, so we did see uh, UVXY, uh, UVXY currently $27. So it has come back. Uh, it was down to um, 24, now back to 27 and change. Uh, it did reach a high of 35.81. So we're moving still. Uh, future is still above water, uh, but are kind of struggling here. So we could see the markets move lower. Um, this appears not to all be over. However, as far as the 80% with these funds and everything, um, tomorrow is a new day. So I would assume as long as they're able to uh, to readjust, uh, the, 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 it should start the clock over with 80% from where they are uh, at the beginning of the day, I, I would think. So, um, uh, I'm going to go off the air now, but to sum it up, we do not hear any confirm confirmations that XIV or SVXY have uh, had an acceleration event. Uh, we are still waiting to hear, uh, but we believe that they had uh, forced margin uh, selling after the close, which is what brought them down so much. Uh, they do continue to trade. When we look at the futures after the close, we see the futures selling off. So we believe that means that... Uh, they did not have to uh, pull the plug on all these things. Otherwise, we would see futures spiking higher right now. Uh, you know, Jim Cramer talks about, oh, well, if this, if we had an acceleration event, the uh, we would see the VIX skyrocket tomorrow. Well, you know, VIX futures are open right now, so it wouldn't be tomorrow. VIX futures would be skyrocketing right now. Uh, these instruments trade in VIX futures. If they needed to buy VIX futures, to liquidate, they would be buying them right now. And Or if they weren't buying the futures, that whatever they did to unwind would be spreading off into the futures. So we don't see that. So these things have not uh, liquidated. Um, tough day for everybody out there. Uh, stay safe. This is, uh, you know, this was, is an unlikely event, but it was always a possibility. We try to warn people about uh, 
the uh, extremes, and this was an extreme event. Um, hope everybody's okay, and uh, thanks for watching.